Hi everyone, in this video I will demonstrate to you how you can find and edit an interactive Desmos activity for your math class. Uh, now in this video I will be looking specifically at an activity that is appropriate for the Math 30-1 or Math 30-2 courses in Alberta, um, but really the instructions provided here can be applied to any math course. So the first thing that I will do is go to teacher.desmos.com and uh, sign in with Google with my school account. And as you can see, you land on a page where you can look for activities or browse activities by topic. Uh, but if you have something in mind, you can just type it into the uh, search bar here. And uh, I'm looking for, let's say, uh, trigonometric uh, graphing, because that's what I'm teaching my Math 30-1s at the moment. And uh, it takes you to something, let's say this is appropriate for, for the activity that you're looking for. It's an introduction to amplitude and vertical shift. And one thing you want to keep in mind is that these activities are uh, excellent for those students who have never been exposed to a particular topic, right? It really allows them, some of these activities are, are built like, like sandboxes where it allows students to sort of go in there and explore freely without being afraid of getting things wrong. Um, some of these activities at the same time are also suited for students who have had a little bit of exposure to the concepts taught in class and, and now have enough background to really, you know, play with, uh, you know, the parameters and play with, um, you know, the, the different slides in the activity. Um, and then at the same time, some of these activities are also built sort of as an assessment of learning, right? Sort of a formative where, the students have you know, taken a few days in class with the teacher to learn the material, and now they're ready to sort of put their, uh, their learning to the test, okay? So one of the things you wanna do is, let's say you find something that is appropriate. You wanna look at the slides, which they show you. There's 14 slides in this particular activity, and if you, you know, wanna get a little bit more detail, wanna get a little bit more up close, you can uh, you know, click on a slide and see exactly you know, what the nature of the activity is. And let's say, you know, you kind of preview it and you're thinking, you know what, this is actually exactly what my students need. Except there are a few things that I might want to change around. Like for example, if you look at slide five, they'll say change the values of A and B. Now, um, in my class, I, I teach it as A and D. I suppose it doesn't really matter. And you know, what would be simple is to tell the students, look, B here really uh, refers to the vertical displacement or, you know, the, the value of the median or the equation of the median. Um, but if it bugs you, I can show you how you can go in there and change it to D. And you would think that it was a, it's a simple thing, but if you're intent on changing it to D because it really bugs you that it's A and B instead of A and D, uh, it is it does require sort of an eagle eye and attention to detail because the B appears uh, a lot in the programming script. Okay, so we will take a look at that later. So let's say you look at these slides and you're thinking, you know what, this is actually pretty good. It's not exactly how I want it, but it's probably at least an 85% fit. Then uh, go ahead and uh, copy it. So I'll click on the three dots up here, copy and edit. And, you know, I, I think you could probably change the name of it up here, but right now it's called copy of trigonometric graphing. So somebody, some, some teacher invested the time to make this interactive activity. You don't have, so that you don't have to start from scratch. Uh, but what you can do if you don't quite like how it rolls out is you can copy and edit it and then change it to fit uh, your your own personal uh, goals. Okay, so once you're here, um, this is sort of the editing page where you can see uh, what you can edit on in you know on each slide. So I would recommend to you that you go through it um, like a student. So if I look at um, slide one, basically what you want to do here is hit preview. This is what the students will see. They will not see the teacher moves and the sample responses. Those are just sort of uh, little notes for the teacher. Uh, what does this say here? Use the teacher dashboard to identify students who may need additional support. Uh, we'll take a look at the teacher dashboard later where you can see uh, in real time as students move through this activity, um, you can see kind of, you know, who's getting it, who's not. If the whole class is kind of uh, you know failing epically on a slide, you can you can sort of halt the proceedings and then just kind of uh, correct any misconceptions as as a group. Um, so this one here looks pretty easy. I just have to adjust the lower limit of the orange band so that uh, it reflects the the range of this graph. Now let's see what happens here. Great job. Well, I thank you very much. You fixed the inequality from screen one. And then uh, notice here that there is a little keyboard that allows students to 
you know, sort of type in the correct range. And if they're typing it from scratch and they're, you know, hard up for an inequality symbol, then they can just click on that keyboard and all of the symbols are here, as well as the QWERTY keyboard, as well as many math functions. Okay, and then we can submit. And if students decide that they want to go back and correct something, they're free to do that, right? So like I said, it's, it's a sandbox. Um, we really try to encourage students to, you know, go ahead and, and try things out. It's okay to make mistakes because that's where the learning really takes place. Okay. So uh, I keep on going and it says fix the inequality below to correctly show the range of the function. So this function is really from about negative two to approximately three. And let's see if I got it. Yes, I got it. And we'll move on. Write an inequality to show the range of the function. Okay, so we can do the same thing. And again, when you write an inequality, you'll probably need the inequality symbol. So you can just uh, press on the uh, keyboard icon there. Okay, so I can skip that. Now in slide five, this is where we may want to make some changes. So for example, it says change the values of A and B. So let's say you've decided that you just can't live with it. You can't, you don't want your students to see A and B. You want them to see A and D. Okay, um, then we need to make sure that every B in the in the script of this of this program uh, needs to be changed to a D. Okay, so uh, let's take a minute to do that. So we're not going to do it from this preview page. We're just going to click off of that one, and uh, here we are on sort of the the page where we can edit slide five. So right here it says change the values of A and B. So we'll change that to D first of all. But then you also have to look at uh, this aspect of it, right? So if I if I go back into the preview, you'll see that there's a B right here as well, and you'll see that there's a B right here as well. So those will have to change. We will have to change those to Ds, okay? So I'm gonna change that to a D. I'm gonna change this to a D. Now, the thing that I noticed here is if you click on this little arrow, it opens up more lines of script or code Okay, so we're going to have to look through here carefully. Oh, there's a B right there. Change that to a D. Change that to a D. Right, and oh, there's a D there. So I'm going to go ahead and do that in all of these cases. Okay, and then uh, and then that's a D, and then we've got a D. Mm, any, more, any more Bs that need to be changed in D? So I think I've got all of them on this page. Okay, I'm also going to go into this uh, little icon here, which says edit com computation layer. Uh, let me just see here. Okay, there's no B's or anything there. I'm going to go into teacher tips and take a look. Okay, we've, we need a D there. We need a D there. Okay, so that should do it for that one. Let's look at slide six. I believe slide six also has areas where there are, ah, see, look at this, there's B's galore, right? So we're gonna change everything to a D. Okay, so I'm just gonna pause here and change everything to a D, and uh, then we'll resume. So everything here is now changed, every B is changed to a D here. I'm gonna go into this uh, computation layer script as well, and I see a few D's, uh, B's that need to be D's. And then even in this grayed out part, you can see that there's a B there that needs to be changed to a D, right? So you really have to have an eagle eye. And here's something, uh, let me just check teacher tips here. Uh, oh, there's a B that needs to be a D there. Sample student responses, another one there. Okay, good. So we've got that. So here's something I didn't know from before, but you actually have to click the graph as well. And then there are some opportunities there. It seems like we already did this, but this is on slide six, I believe. And previously when we saw this, it was on slide five. Okay, so everything should work out now. If I preview it, let's preview slide five. And the idea here is that we need to move this curve into the orange band so that it fits perfectly. And I think we've got basically an amplitude of three and a, and a displacement of five. Okay, so then if we hit next, yes, it works. Okay. Okay, so that was probably a quite a major edit because I probably needed to convert about um, almost 20 
B's into D's, okay? And if you miss one of them, then the the slides might not work. It won't work, work very well, okay? Now, on this page, it says, how can you look at the function and know what the range is? Now, a student might mistake that for looking at the graph of the function and say, well, you know, like one of my students might say, look at the graph. It works, right? Something like that. And that's not really what you're what you're looking for. I think in this one, what they want you to do, or they want the students to do, is to look at the equation of the function. Okay, and so you might want to you might want to specify that. And so let's go into slide. This is slide six, um, and let's take a look. So equation of the function is right here. So can we change that right here? So nice work. Here's the function. How can you look at the equation of the function? And I think. There's another place where, how can you look at the equation of the function? Okay, let's just see if that works out. And then here, we'll change equation of the function, right? So when you're editing, you just have to make sure that you uh, make potentially the same correction in multiple places to make sure that um, everything works out. Okay, so let's preview this. Uh, I think it was slide seven, uh, maybe not. Okay, so let's go to slide five. We'll fix this up again. So here's three. And the other thing that students can do, they, they can just click on the parameter and just type in the value if they want. Okay, how can you look at the equation of the function and know what the range is? Oh, okay, so now now somebody might, uh, you know, be liable to type in, you know, something that's a little bit more detail right like the lower limit of the range is five minus three and the upper limit of the range now this button here share with class what happens is when you click this when when this uh, interactive activity goes live and you're administering to your class let's say you set aside you know 40 minutes for the students to, to work on this sort of independently while you monitor uh, their their progress um, students will hit this slide at different times right and so uh, as they hit the slide and as they share their response uh, what the program does is it will share three other students' responses to give an idea to each student as to whether they're on the right track. Now, I think obviously if there's a student that's kind of your keen student and that's like speeding through it and is ahead of everybody, unfortunately that student is not going to get the benefit of having three other students' responses because they're first out of the gate, right? So it might be worthwhile to slow them down a little bit slow down you know sort of the the faster ones you know and and so that they can kind of see what other responses are there although i think that if they kind of stay ahead of the pack they can always go back through the slides as more students complete them to see what sort of what other responses are have been provided okay so we've kind of looked at some places that we can make some um edits i'm just going to fast forward here to uh, another slide Um, so this is slide 10, and so I do need to do something with slide 9. The function y equals a cosine x plus b has a range of 3.5 to 7.5. Write a function that matches this description uh, in the box below. So maybe we want you know something like y is equal to um, 2 cosine x uh, plus, is it 5.5? Um, something like that, okay? So let's submit that. And then we'll go to there. Okay, so that was the correct answer. And was your equation correct, yes or no? Uh, if I hit yes, it says explain your thinking. If I hit no, it also says explain your thinking. So that's that's kind of helpful to sort of get inside the heads of your students to see you know how they're uh, the processing this, and so you can give them some constructive feedback. Uh, if you go into uh, if you go into the uh, editing window, you can add other options, right? So if I add an option, I, let's go kinda, right? Let's use let's use student lingo here, kinda, and then let's preview this. Oh great, I got to do this again. Okay, so it was y is equal to two cos x plus five point five, and what you end up with here is yes, no, kinda. And if you if you select kinda, you can explain your thinking. Now kinda. Uh, is a little bit tongue in cheek, but really a student might get a they might get a right and d wrong, or vice versa. They might only get one of them right, and the other one wrong. So that would be a kinda, right? So they, their their explanation might be, well, I think I got this one right, but I didn't get this one right. So, so then they can really focus on what they think they got wrong, right? So you might want to do something like that.
right? Um, and then there's there's other things that you can do that I'm not going to get into, but you can add graphs, you can add images. Um, it's really quite versatile in terms of how you can customize it for your own students. Okay, so uh, let's say you move through the rest of the slides and you're like, okay, slides 11 through 14 are really good. Um, I don't need to customize those. When you're done, what you want to do is publish, okay? Now, while you're working through this, you might not be able to do it in one sitting, so you can save the draft and come back to it, okay? But when you're done, you're going to hit publish. And uh, what I want to do now is assign it to my class. Okay, now an easy way to assign it to your class is you can assign it within the Desmos uh, context. Um, and I think it goes to student.desmos.com. But if you've got a Google Classroom set up, you can set it up there. You can just assign it there as well. So I'm going to assume uh, that maybe, well, in this, in this simulation, what I'll do is I'll say I'm a teacher that has a Google Classroom, so I'm going to assign it there. So I'm going to assign to my classes. And I've got some classes uh, available here, so I'll assign it to my math 30-1 uh, AA is my IB community, so I'll assign it there. And if, if you don't have any classes there, you can just hit manage classes and then add your Google Classrooms as appropriate. Okay, so we're there. And the next thing I'm going to do is I will go to my Google Classroom. Okay, so here I am in that classroom to which I assigned that Desmos activity. And I'll go into classwork and you see that it's placed it there. Now, if I want to edit this and, you know, put it under a particular heading, I can do that. Um, but um, I just want to go to this activity and you see that it's been sort of copied and pasted there. Okay, and when a student clicks on it, their name will show up here. Okay, so right now my name is showing up here as if I'm going to be a student. And it is game on time, right? So I'm working through these 14 slides. I'm just going to double check to see where I've made some corrections if they took. Change the values of A and D, right? I've got my A, I've got my D. Um, what else? Um, can't, I, like some of these changes I, I had to make um, when, right, I didn't I didn't actually save the kind of option, right? But we can tell that uh, it, it was saved, A and D. And so like if I go here, remember this was the three, this was the five. Whoops, I'll just do it like this. Right, there we have it, right? And and again, this was a change. How can you look at the equation of the function? So there you have it, um, a quick tutorial on how you can find and edit an existing um, Desmos activity that has been created by you know another teacher. And you know, as long as it's you know more or less a, a good fit, you can always take it and customize it so that um, it works within your context and, and your classroom. So hopefully that was uh, helpful to you and uh, maybe we'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.